Hey guys, and welcome to another storage review video. This one's a little bit different. We're working with Henry Fu from Data On. Kevin O'Brien is here from our test lab, and I'm Brian Beeler. What we've got going on is, if you saw one of our prior videos, we got a two-node Data On cluster in design for small office, remote office, um, whatever it takes. Uh, that's a zero stack HCI in two nodes. We've got uh, an all flash configuration and we've got that operational now in the lab. And while Kevin and Henry were doing a uh, rundown on the system, you know, we started talking about and thinking that it might be fun to walk you through some of the tools we use to, to test this, uh, this little cluster. So we're working with uh, Henry, like I said, on VM fleet. Henry, just give the, the viewers a taste of what VM fleet is and what it's capable of. Okay. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, basically VM fleet is a micro benchmarking tool for, uh, Microsoft, uh, Hyper-V and, uh, specifically for Azure Stack HCI. Um, basically it's a set of scripts that is on top of disk speed, disk speed being the tool that probably 2015, 2016, they created a, a executable to, uh, to ben do bench, uh, benchmarking for uh, storage. Uh, and basically, uh, Microsoft team used uh, created VM fleet, uh, which will create the VMs uh, and kick off runs and everything, do it for you. Uh, so you can test the, uh, the performance of your uh, HCI cluster. So, Kevin, why do you like this over some of the tools we use more frequently, like VD Bench or FIO or whatever else? So, VD Bench, uh, probably a good example there uh, with VD Bench is uh, the VM fleet uh, to um, disk speed is kind of like HCI Bench to um, uh, VD Bench. VD, uh, VD Bench works well on a single instance. You have in a um, uh, on a single host or VM, and you can test it pretty well. You can expand it out through some of the uh, clustering activities of VD Bench, but uh, if you look at uh, the tool that uh, VMware came out for uh, HCI Bench, it deploys multiple VMs in your cluster. Design uh, it lays out to uh, specific sizes, and then kicks off the benchmark, aggregates all the data, and then gives you some nice graphs, which also uh, loops into uh, some of the inter intertwining traffic of uh, the cluster. So it gives you a nice orchestration bit for really more for multi-node is really where the challenge comes in. Yeah, and a lot of these benchmarks, they're difficult to uh, kick off individually and then aggregate the data yourself. So when you have a tool that can do it across multiple nodes, multiple VMs, things get a lot easier. And if you're looking to uh, test a cluster, you might not be looking at like, okay, here's just the bare hardware, what's it capable of, but it's up and running, what the impact of uh, different networking backends might be. There's a lot of different things where it could slow down the, uh, the, uh, the underlying hardware. And uh, this gives a good idea of um, what you're gonna be able to get in a real world case out of the uh, platform. All right, so that we're not doing a podcast with a static screen. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you have going on? What are we looking at here? So basically, uh... The screen that we're looking at is the initial setup of VM Fleet. So at this point, uh, you should have the cluster already set up. You're, you have a uh, storage volume set up uh, and basically just sort of the bare bones of a, of a HCI cluster. So what we're doing here is uh, starting with line three is create a new volume. That volume is where the uh, VM Fleet scripts are gonna reside and the uh, the data uh, that it, it collects will uh, will also be in that in that volume, and then um, moving down, then we basically have a, a script uh, called install VM Fleet. That's part of the VM Fleet package, and basically it will uh, do the setup of, of that uh, of VM Fleet for the initial piece. And then as you can see, there's uh, line 13. Basically, we created a base VHDX with uh, Windows Core, uh, and that will be the, the, the base uh, replicated to all uh, as part of the uh, Hyper-V VM builds that they're gonna use that base 20. And um, we've moved that into that collect uh, folder. 
Henry, are the uh -huh. are the uh, the files required for this? Does Microsoft have these out on GitHub, or do you have to register somewhere to get this? Where do you get the uh, the VM Fleet tools? The VM Fleet tools is in, is on GitHub. Um, the disk speed as the, the the core engine is uh, at a separate location, but if you go to uh, Microsoft Disk Speed on uh, GitHub, that's D I S K S P D, um, the they provide you a link to where to get the actual executable. Okay, great. Um, yep. And then this script that we're looking at is uh, what Data On has uh, created to to basically for every order that um, uh, we, we we basically run VM Fleet to test the performance and do some stress testing to make sure everything is is what we expect. All right, great. Where do we go from here? So uh, after you basically do some uh, file copying between the, uh, the the your what you've collected and what you know as part of the setup, then line twenty basically is to uh, turn off CSV cache with Windows twenty nineteen. The CSV cache is turned on uh, by default with one uh, one gig of uh, CSV cache. What basically this turns it off because it it sort of throws off the numbers. Um, and uh, you wanted to do it without the CSV cache. After that, 25 to 28 basically is to rotate the volumes back and forth to make sure the CSV cache is cleared on each of the volumes. Uh, 31 basically is just to, based on the number of CPUs on the system, uh, the logic processors, basically we, we go backwards and figure out how many cores there are on the system because we want to do a one for one testing for one one core equals one VM per uh, in in the node so that uh, basically we're not trying to stress the CPU scheduler but rather do a benchmark test on the, on the storage so so if you have you know 16 cores in the system we'll have 16 VMs so I don't even remember what we have I know we've got Xeon CPUs in here but do you remember the they might be uh, eight these are eight cores on yeah. on this uh, Kepler um, and then the next one, the, 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 the most time consuming one is the uh, thir line 38. And basically it creates the, the actual VMs uh, using that base VHD. Uh, and then the number of VMs to create is based on line 31. And then the, uh, the super secret admin password um, <laughs> uh, to, for, that, for that VHD uh, and then and then what we would do, uh, and then the connect user and connect pass is what it needs to basically create a uh, virtual network and, and some of the administrative stuff to create the VM. So that's this is the one that will start kicking off and build the, the VMs uh, uh, in, in the, each of the nodes. And so you only have to run the script on one of your nodes and it will create uh, all the VMs and all the nodes. So, when so you, we're looking at a two node here. We had a four mm -hmm. node cluster from you before. Mm -hmm. It was 20 nodes. Is the number of nodes and add much complexity to the initial setup outside of just number of VMs related to cores? Uh, no, it's basically just number, number of cores and, uh, and it'll based on the, you know, uh, it knows how many, how many, uh, nodes you have in the system. So basically. Yeah, there's no, no other additional complexity. Yeah, I think on from our first cluster with Optane to uh, this little baby cluster, the main difference was just the deployment time, uh, building out uh, 100, I'm trying to think of how many VMs we had on yeah, the uh, last one. Yeah, it was quite a bit. On, yeah, versus yeah. Uh, this is probably 16 since there's eight cores on each. Um, dramatically less time uh, on this side. Okay. And then... Uh, Moving on, 41 basically is just a, does our standard uh, setup in terms of processor and memory for each of those VMs, but something that uh, you know can be tweaked. And um, that, and basically by then you have all the VMs. They are configured. Uh, the the n internal networking that it needs to talk to these VMs. Uh, everything is is pretty much ready to go. So a little of the background about uh, VM Fleet uh, walked through. We're going to now kick off the uh, performance counter, which will give us the uh, live uh, real-time stats from our um, cluster. 
So in here you get to see all the background information of uh, the disk speed and the latency, a lot of the uh, Hyper-V traffic and a lot of the really cool information you get to see uh, behind the scenes in a uh, Hyper-V uh, cluster. So this is streaming the real-time data off the, uh, the workloads? Yeah, this is uh, looking at the uh, real-time data that uh, Windows has seen from the uh, the VMs themselves. So it's not this isn't specific to the workload. This is specific to um, kind of cluster management. Right? Yeah. So this is your, your traditional performance counters. Basically, it's just a Microsoft's way of uh, putting it all in one screen. Okay. So now we're going to switch over to our uh, perf test file. Right now, I have a uh, one of our uh, 4K uh, workloads uh, built up. Um, but uh, Henry, could you give us a little bit of a background of uh, how this test runs, or just kind of the uh, the order of how this uh, goes? Yeah, sure. So basically, this is just a script to run various workloads. Uh, the first thing is uh, starting line four. Basically, just make sure that we're in the right path. And then uh, update CSV is to make sure that the uh, the VMs are aligned with the volumes that they should be in. Um, and then check beam fleece just to uh, verify all the uh, VMs are, are up and running. Um, and then moving to the next section, uh, basically we have line 15 with a run name. Basically it's just a unique name that uh, we add to the, the to the run so that uh, we know which one which one it is, um, and then sixteen is the start sweep is basically telling each of the VMs the what parameters to run their own disk speed uh, test. So each VM basically will have its own disk speed uh, using like block size of four, thread of two. Outstanding I/O 16, and then that's 100% read because it write is zero, and then duration of 300 seconds, and then the pattern being uh, random, and then the ad spec is just the unique name you put in, and so this is this is the run we'll, we will we will do, and then um, the next section in uh, line 34, basically we uh, have to find what data we want to collect from that run. Uh, so basically the counter list of uh, volume IOPS read, IOPS write, and so on. And um, in uh, line 39, basically we what we're doing is uh, leveraging the cluster perf uh, that's part of Windows uh, 2019, which is the uh, cluster performance history. Uh, it has a little database. And so we are running a PowerShell command to retrieve the specific pieces of data that we want from the time frame that we want it and then output it into a, a file so we'll, we'll get to see that in a little bit so that's that's essentially what uh what we put together here okay so now i'm going to uh, go back up to the top and uh, kick this off and we can see some of the um uh, PowerShell side of uh, the script where uh, it was checking to make sure that uh, each of the hosts had the uh, balanced number of uh, VMs, a uh, number of VMs that are online. And now this is uh, clearing the pause to allow the workload to kick off. And if we go over here, we can actually see the uh, workloads op uh, already up and running. Uh, so we get an idea of uh, around 324,000 IOPS at the moment uh, in a 4K random read workload. Now, while you guys are looking at, at those numbers, a lot of regular uh, Windows or Zero Stack HCI users would be aware of Windows Admin Center and that reporting. It's outside the scope of what we want to look at right now. But Henry, you know, while you're thinking about visualizing performance data, do you have a lot of you must have a lot of people using Windows Admin Center to, to see cluster performance as well, I assume. Yeah, that's that's the primary way that customers will will uh, utilize the um, the performance data because it basically it, this is sort of a, a 
a culmination of all a lot of different things because um, you can see the IOPS at different levels here at CSV level, SBL, uh, SGD level. But you can um, also get that in the admin center, basically looking at either at the HCI level, the volume level, the disk level. Um, so it, all that data is basically being collected. And it's also there's a uh, time uh, history series. So you can do it the past day, past week, past month, and the past year. So it's, it's very useful to, to know how your workload, uh, your, your system is doing in terms of running the workloads. Well, that's, that's where I would spend my time as a, uh, as an administrator. That's not a command line nerd like you two. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. This is, this is good kind of like, a, you know, for background, you know, you're doing something specific, like we're doing BM fleet and testing workloads. You can easily right. see, Hey, are the two systems running, uh, with the same configuration, are they running about the same, right? This is, it's a synthetic test. So, I mean, reality is going to be very different, but yeah, you just want to check to see if everything is, uh, everything is aligned and in sync and looks like it here. Okay, great. So where do you go from here, Kevin? Well, when the uh, duration of the workload finishes, uh, it will wrap it up and you'll see the uh, workload taper off and it'll be met with a, a little text file at the very end. All right. And so when you're doing this review process on the data on cluster, you'll work through a variety of these files for all of our different workloads and then you know put them together and make the charts and then we'll write some words around it. Yeah. Okay. Well, useful information to, to get a deep dive into VM fleet, uh, nice little set of tools. We will, uh, put a link to, uh, the GitHub page in the description, but, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. If, uh, if you're so inclined, it's a, a neat set of tools to be able to sanity check your setup, if nothing else. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thanks for tuning in.